Welcome to the Big Change of the Film interview series and my name is Jason Cohen. I personally have lost over 120 pounds and every week I chat with individuals who've also lost significant amounts of weight, hear their stories, and pass along some of that inspiration to others. Including today's guest and myself, the total pounds lost is now up to 10,182 pounds. This week's guest is Crystal Zahorsky who lives in Washington State. Crystal at the age of 25 was diagnosed with high cholesterol was told that she would need to be on statins as soon as she was done having kids and that she would be on those drugs for the rest of her life. She decided that seemed unreasonable for her and decided to take control of her life. She lost 25 pounds. She's been able to control her high cholesterol with food instead of medicine for the last several years. And she told me that at the age of 39, she feels better than she did in her 20s. We have a great conversation about all this and so much more. And thanks so much for watching. I'm here with Crystal Zahorsky. Uh, I actually found out about her story on ForksOverKnives.com. She has lost some weight. She's also had some pretty significant uh, changes in terms of uh, other parts of her life with her health. And so, Crystal, first off, thanks so much for taking the time to chat with me. Um, maybe we could just start off with uh, where you're from and how much you've lost. Um, I am from Renton, Washington, which is just outside of Seattle. And from my highest weight, I've lost about 25 pounds and maintained that for several years now. Okay, super cool. So I, um, you know, one thing that stuck out to me and uh, intrigued me about the Forks Over Knives article is that um, you had, which you had in uh, quotes, hereditary high cholesterol, um, and that you got a diagnosis at the age of 25. Is that right? Yep. Mm -hmm. And and give me an idea of kind of what that means um, and what went through your head whenever you got that. Yeah, so it was just my first cholesterol test in my 20s, and my doctor was not even really expecting anything to come back different. And she was like, wow, you have high cholesterol. It just must be something hereditary. I was, you know, otherwise pretty healthy. And um, so she basically said she wouldn't want me to go on statin drugs then because I wanted to have children and they didn't want me to go on drugs and then off of drugs to through pregnancy and back on. So, so basically then I was told you'll have to go on statin drugs um, for cholesterol after I was done having babies. So that's when it really started and I started trying to research a little bit of crazy things like I think I had to eat like two tablespoons of cinnamon a day and things like that to try and nothing really did anything significant with my cholesterol. So it was really up when I was 33 after I had my second um, child was when I knew I had to figure something out or I was going to end up on statins. Wow. And then, you know, uh, I know that hereditary is uh, that word was thrown around a little bit. Looking back in your family history, uh, does uh, high cholesterol, is that run in the family? Yeah, it does. But also, uh, you know, being overweight and <laughs> unhealthy runs in the family too so <laughs> <laughs> yeah and so can you kind of give me an idea of what you know what did uh what did food look like for you growing up uh pretty pretty much the american sort of junk food diet um i grew up in the 80s and 90s and my parents worked so we didn't have you know family dinners we kind of fended for ourselves grabbed junk food um, made our own, you know, no one in my family was really into healthy food. Um, and then when I was in my teens and it was teen girls start worrying about what they look like. And I especially had a friend who is especially into being skinny and all this stuff was when stuff like that started getting into my head about, oh, maybe I, I didn't care about my weight. It was not even on my radar at that point, but I was probably about 15. And that's when I started thinking, oh, well, maybe I'm too fat. I need to lose weight. How do you do that? Started, you know, restricting calories and stuff like that. So. And, and I know, you know, um, you did have some extra weight. Um, the extra weight for you, was that something that did start at an early age? Or was it something that you put on later in life? Um, I would say if people looked at me, they wouldn't have said I was overweight. So, no, I wasn't overweight. I was healthy. Um, other people in my family were heavier and struggled more th with their weight. Um, but then as I got older, went to college, gained weight in college and really started, I think, um, eating more. I, I have, I have always struggled with anxiety, although it's gotten better. And I think food became more of like a comfort, you know, feeding to calm me down when I was upset or nervous about things like that. And that's when I started really putting on more weight. 
um, was using it as sort of self-medicating with food, probably in my 20s. And, and was that uh, in the way of junk food or in the way of sweets or what, you know, what were kind of the, the major things there that, that contributed? Um, you know, I think I tried to be healthy and I thought I tried to eat healthy. I just overate or I would eat healthy all day and then sort of binge eat ice cream at night, you know, um, typical like diet all day and then treat myself to a half a gallon of ice cream or whatever. Um, so yeah, and just not being active enough, not understanding proper portion sizes and living in anxiety. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, so you, you go through the period, they tell you, you know, you need to be on meds, but wait until after you have kids and then you get, after your second kid, you kind of have this realization. Did you have a moment where you decided to really kind of change things up or turn things around or what did that process kind of look like for you? Yeah, I really did not want to go like, to me, going on statin drugs at age 33 for the rest of my life just did not seem reasonable. I to just say, oh, oh, well, I just have to take it. Being on drugs, having a prescription every month for the rest of my life, that just wasn't good enough for me. I had started um, looking a little more at holistic health. Before that, I had had my daughter at a birth center in a water birth. I went, you know, drug free for my second birth where I'd gone with medication. So I'd started that process a little bit of just um, more natural, looking for more, at least researching what I could try and do naturally to prevent having to go on a prescription for my, the rest of my life. And so that's when I started researching um, and watching some food documentaries and things like that about the the effects of uh, pesticides and things in our food system, the factory farming industry, um, and kind of how horrific that is. And um, then specifically, I saw Forks Over Knives and some other uh, documentaries that I was like, well, I'll give anything a try, you know? And that's when I really tried to go um, whole food, plant-based, you know, really stick with whole grains and all that stuff. And it made such a great difference. And I had told my sister about it and she um, had had the hereditary high cholesterol too. And she kind of went even, not even as full force as I did. She kind of just went like vegetarian, still ate some dairy here and there. And she dropped her cholesterol a lot, even more than me. Mine, I don't know, is maybe more stubborn, but um, yeah. So we both had great results within, I think hers within four or five months and me within eight months, I had dropped my highest total cholesterol of 391 and you're supposed to be under 200 and I can ma I maintain now in the 220s but my doctor says that's okay because I have a very high HDL which is your good cholesterol number and my LDL which is your bad cholesterol is far below um, what it needs to be at so my ratio for cholesterol is healthy and she's been shocked at how um, I've been able to do that and I don't even really have to get tested every year anymore. I only have to get tested every other year and, you know, I just maintain that diet and as well as exercise, um, high intensity interval training and I'm a runner, um, which is also shown to help with cholesterol and it's been great because I love um, not only just that my cholesterol numbers, but how much better I feel, <laughs> you know, I think sometimes we and i've been trying to work with my 14 year old about this sometimes you have to learn what you know what your body feels like and you don't realize you felt bad for so long i felt depressed and lethargic and you're overweight and um and now i have a lot of energy i can i have more energy and i feel younger than i did when i was in my 20s and i'm close to 40 i'm six months away from 40 now and so that's what it, it's not even about being skinny. You know, a lot of people, maybe in, when I was in my twenties, I was about being skinny. Now I'm just about feeling good, having energy. I have two of my own kids, three step kids. So my husband and I have five kids at home between the ages of six and 14. And they're all, they're in three different schools, sports activities. We need a lot of energy, you know? And, um, so, and plus, also, we have to live out an example for our kids now of a healthy lifestyle. And so it's just so much more than just um, a diet. You know, it's a lifestyle. It's living out health. It's feeling amazing and having more energy than people, you know, you know, 10, 15 years younger than me. Um, 
I don't mind that people usually think I'm five or ten years younger than I am. You know, <laughs> that's a benefit. Um, that's not why I do it, but hey, I'll take it. My clothes feel great. I feel like I'm just where my body should be. You know, I just have found what I feel like is the proper healthy weight for my frame. Um, and yeah, so it's about so much more than just cholesterol numbers or losing weight. It's just about living a healthy lifestyle and feeling great and having the energy to do all the things we want to do and have to do. So, And how long did it take until you started noticing some of those differences as far as, you know, how you were feeling, your energy and all that kind of stuff? Oh, really quickly. Um, for me, I think dairy was a huge, it makes me feel terrible and I don't know how, I, maybe it works different for other people. Um, but getting off dairy was really great for me as far as the physical benefits, um, benefits to my skin, um, digestion, all of those things within weeks, you know? And then when weight just kept coming off and coming off and coming off, even I wasn't really worried about the weight necessarily. Um, it was just, first of all, you know, about changing my cholesterol numbers, um, all the other benefits come in. And then I realized after a while how I never knew what feeling good felt like <laughs> until, you know, after a few weeks of really changing the way I ate. Wow. And then how did you find the process in terms of, you know, changing the actual food preparation, what meals look like, what, you know, groceries look like, all those kinds of things. Cause I'm imagining that probably looked different once you decided to make the change than before. Yeah. You know, I would say it's, it was an evolving process and maybe it's still evolving. I, you know, researched a bunch of different, um, vegan cookbooks. I have, I just found the, the foods I liked, I tried a bunch of different food um, and ways of preparing things. I personally don't like fake meats and a lot of that processed um, vegan stuff. I it just it causes me stomach issues and so it was just a process of trying all of those different things that are out there, different options. I don't like fake cheese either, so I just don't really eat cheese. You know, um, the trying different nut milks or whatever non dairy milks. You know, or creamers or yogurts. It was just, I would say, a few years processing through finding bloggers and recipes that I liked, learning different ways of um, preparing foods I used to like, but in a healthier way and without meat or dairy. Um, and so now it's, it's really easy. It's just, I know how to do it. It's fun for me. Cooking has been a fun, creative outlet for me. Um, I like cooking for other people and saying, see, look at what it's like. You know, you don't this, you don't even have to have meat. And, and most people are pretty impressed with how good food can taste if you know how to cook it and the flavors of uh, real foods. I think I grew up eating so much junk and processed foods. You don't even know what real, you know, more nat food in its more natural state even tastes like anymore. And so getting used to that and, it, and really enjoying it, I got to the point where I don't like to go out to restaurants as much or eat box, you know, food, crackers, stuff like that, because I don't even enjoy the taste anymore. Um, so yeah, it's just a process, I think, of learning what you like um, and and finding recipes that you like. And yeah, so it, it, I, I, I wasn't a, I, and I'm still not a really um, black and white, you know, uh, like, I didn't just cut everything off. You know, it's a process of changing over and learning, I think. It's, it's evolved over time. So, Yeah, and on that note, as far as, you know, recipes, bloggers, things like that, are there are there any of your, your go-to cookbooks or go-to websites that you love that you would share? Yeah, well, Forks Over Knives, um, of course, um, where that article was. Um, but also, I love Angela Lydon, and she's on ohsheglows.com. Um plantpowerkitchen.com. That's Drina Burton. Um, so I have their cookbooks and I love them. And I followed them. So those are the two I really feel like have great tasting recipes and quality food um, that I have found my family likes, you know, when I cook those recipes. I can't make super crazy stuff. Um, so yeah, that and then, you know, Pinterest, sometimes you can find things on Pinterest or whatever. But I normally now, I also know how to substitute things out of regular recipes, and I kind of just um, experiment and make things up on my own now. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, 
Oshi Glows is definitely one of uh, myself and my wife's go-tos just in terms of knowing that, you know, if you follow the recipe, you're probably going to get something at least decent. Whether or not it's something that you absolutely love or not may just be a personal preference, but at least they're, they're kind of tried and true. Yeah, no, she's amazing. So, yeah, I love her. So you've got five kids under the roof. I'm thinking, uh, you know, uh, what does that look like cooking and introducing foods and all that kind of stuff? You know, what has that process been like for you? Well, they eat meat, um, probably less meat than they would. Um, so I sometimes I just make stuff that's just for me. Um, usually I try and make something that I can eat without at, and take a portion out for me that doesn't have the meat or whatever. My stepdaughter has uh, trouble with dairy anyway. And so we really don't even have much dairy stuff in the house. So that's pretty easy. And then meat, I can just usually make... Um, like I made like a vegetable fried rice last night and then I made it with chicken for the rest and I just eat it without the meat or add more vegetables or beans for myself, you know? So I kind of have to, five kids, is, it's really, I had two kids when I was a single mom and then recently adding more kids, it's it's still evolving in how we're, we're doing all that. But um, yeah, I think it it's just to create, we try, I try and do things creatively because when you're trying to please seven people anyway, you're never going to be able to make one thing that, that works. So we try and do things in such a way that, you know, I can take out or separate out what I don't eat and, and what others either don't like or don't eat. And, you know, then everyone can kind of put together their meal in such a way that it works for everyone. So yeah, it's an ongoing process figuring that out. But. It's, it sounds like a, like a, like a build your own buffet almost. Pretty much. Yeah, that's kind of how it works out sometimes. So, yeah, you know, we do a lot of like burgers where I can have a veggie burger or whatever, a bean burger. I love making homemade, you know, burgers. They can have what they want on the grill. We, we grill vegetables along with it. So, you know, I can have that kind of stuff and or pasta. It's easy to make pasta that has, you know, no dairy, no meat or a cashew cream sauce so it's a cream sauce that's non-dairy or something like that you know uh we're still working through figuring it all out but yeah you know burrito bowls or things like you said that's like more buffet style serve yourself up different things yeah <laughs> yeah you know you mentioned that before you know uh food addiction you know anxiety all that kind of stuff was a struggle how has that changed with the way that you know the food that you eat has changed I think that's all, all of it has, has probably over the last, you know, 15 or maybe 20 years. It's a process that all has kind of evolved together in dealing with my anxiety, getting through um, the, the mental aspects of dealing with that also increased my own um, self-esteem and uh, along with the exercise and feeling better helps to lift depression and manage anxiety. So all those things have kind of gone together. Um, you know, growing in my own faith and, you know, knowing that, you know, I don't, I don't compare myself to media anymore. That's not what's important to me. Knowing that I have a purpose, I was made a certain way for a certain purpose and it doesn't, I don't need to compare myself to, you know, photoshopped images on a screen. So it's the mental, the mental aspects a lot that stop me, but also having children really, um, just the, the going through pregnancy and growing a child and birthing a child to me really gave me so much respect for my body that changed a lot of my own self criticism, um, towards my body. Um, so that really, really helped me to look at myself more positively physically and see the strength you know, of my body and treat my body better that way. Um, and treat myself more kindly <laughs> the way I thought about myself or saw myself. So I think all of that helped and it all worked together over time, maturing, um, you know, the process of personal growth, spiritual growth, mental growth, emotional growth through the process, all been part of it, but you know, working together. That's all awesome. Um, you know, in the Forks Over Knives article, and I know that was a little while ago, you talk about your increased energy, you know, to be able to chase your kids around, which it sounds like they're a little older now. Um, but, you know, I, I think what you said is, uh, you know, I run a business from home. In addition, I chase my kids from morning until night, manage my house and yard, and still have energy to run five miles when I get a kid-free hour. 
um, I'm thinking, you know, when you contrast that to you were lethargic, you know, binge eating a half a tub of ice cream a night, life looks significantly different for you now. Um, you know, how has running played into all that and exercise played in all that? Well, running is definitely, <laughs> I always say, it burns off the crazy. Like I tell my husband, I tell anyone, it behooves everyone to force me to go running or, you know, let me go. Don't try and stop me because it really is a mental. It used to be when I was in my 20s, I started running when, late in my 20s and it was about trying to get skinny. And now it's completely the mental de-stress, burn off the anxiety, endorphins are a real thing, you know. <laughs> um, so that is the main thing. I love running for that. It's my personal time. I don't I don't like training. I don't like having to put times on it or paces on it. It's just my time to go out where I solve the world's problems in my head. And so that's really what it does for me. Um, and now with my husband, we're also doing, um, I'm, I still love to run. He's not a distance runner. So we were doing other um, programs together that are more strength training and stuff. But so it's just um, activity that he and I enjoy together. So it's great. Then the kids see us. We have the kids join in. My stepdaughter will go online um, and I, we use beachbody.com. So there's a lot of on-demand workouts. And so I will do workouts and tell her, you know, and she loves to do her own workouts. And I just think it's great because it's such a great example to our kids when they see us making it's fun for us. It's something my husband and I do. They see that in our relationship and that they can see us be healthy, make it a priority. Yeah, I think the, uh, you know, what you were talking about being the, the example both on the food and the exercise thing has to be tremendous for being a parent. Um, yeah. You know, looking back now, is there anything that surprised you along this journey that you maybe didn't expect, that you wouldn't have expected, you know, 5, 10, 20 years ago? that you know you're in a place now that is just different than you'd anticipated um i think probably just i look back and you think oh high cholesterol oh i have to be vegan oh you know whatever it, people look at it so negatively you know um like and i don't i never talked about it or you know talked a ton or try, made myself be a pain in the butt i don't believe in making you know bothering other people if we're invited over somewhere and say oh i only eat vegan you must you know um and because people have such a a bad name or a reputation of being sort of snooty or whatever sometimes and so i never tried to make it a big deal i just said look this is what i have to do for health reasons it's you know no big deal but what has had, you know, most people would think was a negative. Oh, you can't eat meat. Oh my gosh. It's just been so great for me. It's, it's been, it's taken away any fears or, um, just disordered eating, disordered thinking about food. It's completely changed my relationship with food and thinking about, um, what it's for. I don't ever have to count calories, eating healthy whole foods. Um, it's really hard to gain weight if you're eating healthy whole foods. So I don't have to think about um, maintaining my weight. You know, if I'm active and I eat healthy whole foods, um, it's just not even really a thought. It just, it it's an easy way for me. I think it's better uh, for me because it took away the mental part of feeling food guilt. And, and so it was actually a blessing in disguise, I guess, ultimately. Um, and I'm happy about it. it. It's gives me a really good reason besides just, oh, I should eat vegetables. I really like have to, for one, it spurred me on, um, because I don't like taking medication if I don't have to. Um, yeah. So I think that's what it is. It just, it's been a great blessing to me. What others would think is not, would not be a blessing. <laughs> That's awesome. And I know that you ended up not going down that road with the medications, but you know, you said you're almost 40. What was kind of the expectation that if you wouldn't have done anything about that, where you would be now, you know, if you wouldn't have changed your diet, if you wouldn't have, you know, made any kind of adjustments uh, that you've made? Oh, I would be on statin drugs, I'm sure. <laughs> and for the rest of my life, and that just would have been what most people think, you know, I think, older generations should think that is the way, you know, my family, the older people, my parents and grandparents, that was just the way it is. You just get older, you just take cholesterol medication, all that stuff. I know myself, I tend to have reactions to medications that 
they say don't have side effects. And so I just knew what I'd probably end up doing is being on a drug and then having to take another drug to counteract some weird side effect I would get from that drug and, you know, certain things like that. So I just don't like going down that road if I don't have to. I'd much rather stay off of anything if I can find a different way. <laughs> yeah. And then I don't know if you're still, you know, seeing a doctor regularly now, but but if you are, what are they kind of saying now as far as the status of of your quote unquote hereditary uh, you know, disease? Yeah, it's it's under control, it's managed. I don't need medication. She's perfectly happy. My ratio is very, very good. My HDL is very, very good. It's she's not at all worried about me having to go on statins at all. So and that's been maintained since that article. So almost five years, I guess. Wow. That's awesome. Um, you know, kind of in closing, just a few last questions. If you could have a conversation with somebody who's at the beginning of this journey, who maybe has received, you know, some of that news from their doctor, or they're just in a place where they're wanting to, you know, take their health, uh, under control. What will you tell that person on day one? I think just, um, that it's just because your doctor says something, it doesn't mean you can't personally take control of doing more research, trying different things. You have to be an advocate for yourself and your own health. And I'm not saying don't listen to your doctor. You should be aware of, you know, the tests and everything they tell you. But medication, you can try other things before medication. I think so easily people just think, well, I'm stuck with that. And I think for a lot of conditions, um, that's not necessarily the case at first. So just take, I would just say, just do your research, see what you can do. I think there's a quote that I love that um, basically says, um, food is the most powerful form of medicine, you know? Um, and I do agree that what you put in your body significantly affects so much of, of your body and different people's bodies are different too. So I think not what works for me isn't necessarily gonna be the best for anyone else, but you should just get to know your own body really well, what foods, do for you or you know are bad for you or don't make you feel good and and then you can you once you learn your own body it's a lot easier to to figure it out awesome and then if you could go back in time and have a conversation with yourself before you started you know this leg of your journey and could offer some words of encouragement or advice to that person what would that be um I think I would just, I mean, what I would do for anyone right now and what I really feel passionate about is encouraging, especially women, that it's okay to take care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually and do what you need to do to take care of those things, especially as moms. Um, we tend to sacrifice so much for our kids, Not, and, and I firmly believe that you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of anyone else really well. And... Um, so it would be just to take the time that it's worth it. You're worth it. You're the only one who can take care of yourself. And, and we're stewards of our bodies, our bodies, you know, our lives are gifts and we should steward, steward that well and take care of it so that we can live the life that we're meant to live and live out our purpose and be healthy and strong and able, you know, to do it the best we can. Yeah, that's all wonderful. Um, if somebody's hearing your story and resonates and wanted to try and connect with you, what would be the best way? Um, well, I'm on Facebook, like you found me. Um, and I did start a separate Facebook page where, because as I said, I'm passionate about just encouraging women to take care of themselves, that it's okay to, to take time to take care of themselves. It's not a selfish thing, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, like I said. And so I have a public page called Crystal Fit and Unpolished. So what I mean by fit, obviously, is pretty mentally, physically fit, but also unpolished is just me being more candid, not that sort of Facebook highlight reel thing that a lot of people put. It's just being real, wanting to connect with people, share real life about, you know, food, cooking, recipes, eating, fitness, kids, that kind of stuff where I will just sort of almost be more blog posting, more real, um, the reality of my life anyway, what I've learned, what, you know, trying to be encouraging basically <laughs> awesome. to encourage, encourage people to take care of themselves and that, that is, 
that's what they, you know, that's the way to live our best life and take care of the people around us and be able to love other people and our kids and our families. And yeah. <laughs> that's great. Well, I'll include links to that. And uh, Crystal, congratulations on everything you've done. And um, thanks so much for spending the time to chat with me. And I hope you have a great day. Yeah, thank you. You too.